What if I told you that performing a 13 minute exercise while laying down could drastically improve your focus, memory, mood, and mental health? Well, you're in luck because the science says that's what happens when you meditate. In this episode of the Student Performance Podcast, we are channeling our inner Buddha to explore the cognitive benefits of meditation to help you achieve stress-free straight A's. Hit the intro. Welcome to the Student Performance Podcast, where we dive deep into the science of concepts you never knew had such a big impact on your well-being as a student. My mission is not only to transform your life in the classroom, but help you live a more fulfilled life outside of it as well. All right, everyone. I truly believe this episode is going to blow your mind and redefine what meditation means to you. I think we all have pictured meditation as a Buddhist monk meditating for hours on end, thinking about nothing. But that's not what it is at all. I'm going to outline the three most popular types of meditation, how and when you should do them, and walk you through a 13-minute research-backed technique that has been shown to improve your memory, focus, and mood. I'll also go through a bonus relaxation protocol used daily by the one and only Andrew Huberman, so you're not going to want to miss that as well. As always, I have everything timestamped, so feel free to navigate the episode as you wish. And something new I want you to focus on in this episode is as I'm going through the meditation protocol, think of how it relates to your life. Think of how and when you're going to implement these techniques, then write it down on a piece of paper. So let's first talk about what's happening in your body when you meditate and introduce some of the main characters of our story. First, I want to talk about the difference between white and gray matter in our brain. Gray matter includes the regions of our brain that is involved in muscle control and sensory perception, such as seeing, hearing, memory, emotions, and speech. White matter is the tissue which messages pass between in different areas of gray matter within the nervous system. I like to think of this as a network of cities. The gray matter can be thought of as the cities themselves that contain all the buildings, economy, and people. Whereas the white matter represents the freeways that connect different places together. When you meditate consistently over a period of time, it increases the gray matter in your hippocampus, which is in charge of learning, and your prefrontal cortex, which is in charge of decision-making. In addition, when you meditate, you transition your body from a sympathetic state, which is your flight or flight mode, to a parasympathetic state or restful mode. Most of us are constantly on the go or stressed out, so it's always good to take a moment to recenter ourselves, to think clearly, and regulate our emotions. Now that you know the science, let's dive deep into the different types of meditation. First is called focus meditation, which involves concentration using any of the five senses. For example, you can focus on something internal, like your breath, or you can bring in external influences to help you focus your attention. One of my favorite external focuses is the flame of a candle or a campfire. Now don't worry, you won't see visions like the hound did in Game of Thrones, but this type of meditation has been shown to improve your attention and your memory. A lot of people get frustrated while doing this type of meditation because they tend to lose their concentration within the first 30 seconds of when they start. But the point of the exercise, guys, is not to keep your focus for as long as you can. The point of this exercise is to be able to refocus your attention after your mind starts to wander. So if you get distracted during the exercise, good. You're doing it right as long as you refocus your attention. Being able to refocus is very important when we're trying to be productive. When we are performing any bout of work, we aren't going to be completely focused the entire time. We are going to be distracted by our thoughts or other things, but by performing a daily focused meditation, we can learn to get back into the zone more quickly. So let me teach you a 13 minute focused meditation protocol that has been shown by Wendy Suzuki's lab to enhance your attention, memory, mood, and emotions. First, I want you to sit somewhere quiet where no one's going to distract you. Then, set a timer for 13 minutes. There are two things I want you to focus on. The first is going to be your breath, and the second is going to be a couple inches behind your forehead. I know this sounds a little weird, but this is where your third eye is. Every time you catch your mind wandering during the 13 minutes, refocus your attention back to your breath and your third eye. And you're done. If you are an experienced meditator, this 13 minutes is going to feel like an eternity. 
but that's okay. You'll get better at it the more you do it. Some things to note about this protocol is when you should perform it. Participants in the study by Wendy Suzuki's lab found that if they did it within four hours of going to bed, they had a hard time falling and staying asleep. So I would recommend doing this right in the morning when you wake up, which is what I do, or do it before you study. Your focus is like a muscle. It needs to warm up before it can perform at its maximal capacity. This 13 minute exercise is a great way to warm up your focus so you can fall into the zone more quickly when you study. The next type of meditation is called mindfulness meditation, which originates from the Buddha himself. In mindfulness meditation, you pay attention to your thoughts as they pass through your mind. You don't judge the thoughts or become involved with them. You simply observe and take notes of any patterns that might come about. I like to think of this as a mental check-in with yourself. What is that little voice in your head really telling you? Are these thoughts positive or negative? Are they some crazy scenario you formed in your mind that has no chance in reality of happening? The more aware you are of what you're telling yourself every day, the better you'll be able to modulate it. For most of us, we have this little negative voice in our head telling us we aren't good enough. This isn't you. This voice was implanted in your head by someone else. The better we can recognize that voice, the better we can be at telling it to get lost. A study found that undergraduate students who performed a 10-minute mindfulness meditation showed decreased stress levels and were better able to control their thoughts. The better we are in control of our thoughts, the easier it's going to be to stay focused and get started on a task we want to perform. Something to note about mindfulness meditation is that after doing it, you can feel a little sleepy. You are more in the observation mode rather than concentrating like the focus meditation. There's some studies that actually show that students' energy levels decrease after mindfulness, which is fine. I personally like performing this right before I go to bed. I like to observe my thoughts, which are usually about the events of my day. I like to see what thoughts I have a strong emotional attachment to. These could be good or bad. Again, I'm not judging myself for these thoughts, just making a mental note of them and letting them pass through my mind. During these mindfulness practices, I've had a lot of creative breakthroughs because I'm not forcing anything and I'm almost letting my subconscious mind take over. The last type of meditation is called transcendental meditation where you are transcending into another dimension. Just kidding. But this is more of a spiritual meditation and people have reported having vivid dreams and out of body experiences while doing it. With that being said, this is best practice when taught by an instructor. It involves the use of a mantra, which can be unique to you, and is something you say over and over to yourself. For me, saying a mantra to myself is difficult to stay focused, but a lot of people, including one of my mentors, swear by it. So if you want to try this practice out, go on a guided YouTube video or to a class. One study found that young people who perform transcendental meditation showed decreased cortisol levels and showed an increase in their mental health. The last protocol I want to go over is called Yoga Nidra or Non-Sleep Deep Rest. This practice is very powerful in helping people to rest and overcome anxiety, sleeplessness, and chronic fatigue. There are some that say that 30 minutes of Yoga Nidra is equivalent to two hours of sleep. If there are any Andrew Huberman fans out there, this is something that he does every day. It's a guided practice, so I'll link a YouTube video in the description, but basically this puts you in a state of total relaxation. The guided voice helps you relax every muscle of your body, including your mind. It makes you feel like a sack of potato. It's pretty awesome, to be honest. At the end of this practice, you feel a jolt of energy and feel a lot more rested, especially if you didn't sleep well the previous night. So now I want to give you specific things to focus on depending where you are at in school. High school students, the quicker you can train your attention, the better. You guys have grown up in the social media culture where everything is 20 seconds long before you move on to the next thing. Especially during COVID when you've been behind screens the past couple of years, that's terrible for your focus. So I want you guys to try to do this 13 minute focus meditation every day. Do it at a time where you'll be the most consistent at it. That could be right when you wake up or it could be after you get home from school and about to start your homework. This practice will help you immensely. For college students, I also want you to train your focus so you can be more productive whenever you're studying or can pay attention better in class. 
but I also want to emphasize the mindfulness component to your meditation routine. In college, I found myself constantly comparing myself to my classmates, especially while being pre-med. I would think, what are other people's grades? What activities are they involved in? I'm not as good as them because I'm not doing what they're doing. And all this other BS that was telling me I wasn't good enough. Once I started mindfulness and learned to quiet that little voice in my head, there was a lot less doubt in my abilities. When there's less doubt, it makes it easier for you to get out of your comfort zone to accomplish something great. For graduate students and people who aren't currently in school, adding a practice of mindfulness or yoga nidra in the mid-afternoon when your energy levels start to decrease could possibly change your life. For many of you, you are undertaking a lot of responsibilities that can be overwhelming and draining. That's why it's so important for you to take some time for yourself to get your thoughts together, recharge right before you get into the latter part of your day. If you perform this exercise consistently, your mental health and sanity will thank you. Now, there are a couple of books that have really changed my life when it comes to meditation that I want to discuss. You can find their links in the show notes if you want to pick them up. But the first book is called Into the Magic Shop by Dr. James Doty. This is the book I recommend more than any other. And it's the story of a boy from a broken home. One day when he was around 12, he goes into a magic shop and a lady named Ruth teaches him a meditation exercise that allows him to quiet his mind, visualize his goals, and lead with an open heart. With the help of this meditation practice, he was able to overcome his circumstances and become one of the most prominent neurosurgeons in the world. He becomes best friends with the Dalai Lama and created the Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education at Stanford. His book really shows you what's possible to achieve when you get out of your own way. I'll actually be interviewing Dr. Doty in a future episode of the podcast, so look out for that. Another great book is called Joy on Demand, and this really opens your mind to what meditation truly is. The author was one of Google's first engineers and actually helped create Google's first mobile search engine. As an engineer, he found the power of meditation and its effect on productivity and his mood, and he led a whole culture shift at Google, revolutionized how they treat their employees. It's an awesome book that I highly recommend you pick up. Okay, so now let's get to some of your questions. The first is from Michelle from New Jersey, and she asks, what's the best way to get started if you've never meditated before? Awesome question, which I'm sure a lot of you out there listening to this have as well. Now, I outlined a 13-minute meditation practice to improve your focus, but for many of you out there, being alone for your thoughts might seem like a torture chamber. I totally get it. So start small. Start with three minutes of focusing on your breath and third eye. Once you've done that for a week, try five minutes, then 10, and just start building from there. For all you beginners out there, remember, I can't emphasize this enough. The point of meditation is not to be good at the exercise and train your mind to focus on your breath for an eternity. The point of meditation is just to do the exercise so you can transition your body into a parasympathetic state. We are training ourselves to refocus our attention. So don't get frustrated. You'll eventually get better at it, but just focus on doing the practice daily. The second question is from Jared from North Carolina, and he asks, what is the most optimal meditation practice for my performance? So I'm gonna take this as, if you wanna be the perfect meditation student, what protocol would you suggest? Now, no one's perfect, especially me, but I would suggest in the afternoon before you start a work bout, do that 13 minute focused meditation exercise we spoke about earlier so you can get in the zone more quickly. Then perform 90 minutes of focused work. And after that, go on a walk in nature where you're practicing mindfulness. You're just observing your thoughts and letting your conscious mind rest. Or you can perform yoga nidra where you're falling into a non-sleep deep rest, which has been shown to consolidate memories and acquire skills more quickly. This is what high performance athletes do. Again, this protocol is if we lived in a perfect world, which we don't. And performing these two things daily is sometimes unrealistic. But just by performing one of the meditation practices I outlined in this episode for five minutes is sufficient enough to see drastic changes in your life if you've never meditated before. Focus on progress, not perfection. 
All right, everyone, that concludes the fourth episode of the Student Performance Podcast. Be sure to share this episode with a friend who is overly stressed out and can use some meditation in their life. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave us a five-star review. I encourage you more than ever to go to the show notes to see all the resources I put down there. I added guided meditation practices that you can access on YouTube in addition to the books and studies that I mentioned in the podcast. All right, everyone. Namaste, and I'll see you in the next one.